Tony was surprised at how full the parking lot was. He was going to have to go find a spot. So first he drove to the main gate to drop off Walt. He kept the engine running and ran around to the passenger side to give Walt a hand getting out. And he told Walt, you know, go ahead, I'll catch up. Walt nodded, but just stood there for a minute, leaning on his cane and seeming a bit nervous. Then he straightened his tie, straightened his fedora, took a deep breath and started for the gate. Tony went to park the car. This wasn't usually how he spent Good Friday morning. Sleeping in would have been nice, but Shane was spending the day with Meg and her family. And when Walt had started talking about this thing and how he and Esther had gone together every year and how this was the first year without her and how he didn't think he could go alone, well, of course, Tony had offered. And of course, Walt had said, no, no. But it wasn't the kind of no that you take seriously. And in the end, they'd made a deal. Tony would provide the wheels and Walt would buy lunch. Tony figured that Walt had won on both accounts, but what are you gonna do? He found a spot, locked the car, headed for the gate. He'd never been to one of these things before, the Stations of the Cross. So he'd spent most of last evening trying to find a Bible that somebody had given him and Meg when they got married. He eventually found it in a box of her old records that she still hadn't taken. The Thompson Twins and Cindy Lauper and the Bible. He flipped through it looking for the story. He figured it was probably pretty climactic, so it would be near the end somewhere, and man, was that wrong. In the end, he'd given up and Googled it. He found it in his Bible on page 1191. He read the whole story twice. So that's Good Friday. It was awful. Everybody Jesus had trusted had either sold him out or run away. It was just mean. Tony hated movies like that, even with a happy ending. He wished he wasn't going now. But here he was at the big gate, one that said Sacred Heart in big letters across the top. Just inside there was a path that split left and right through the trees and right in the center of the fork was a big bronze statue, life-size, and people sitting on benches all around it. It was the scene from page 1191. Tony remembered where Jesus prays alone in a garden, but he wanted to find Walt. So he followed the path around the bend. The next statue he came to was one of Jesus being buried. His friends were carrying his body and some had their faces in their hands. The next one was Jesus' body being taken down from the cross and Tony realized that he must be going in the wrong direction, but he stopped long enough to take a look. Jesus' eyes were open and empty, the eyes of the dead. His friends looked angry and shocked and one, a woman that Tony took to be Jesus' mother was reaching up to touch his face. After that, he saw um, the cross lying on the ground with Jesus stretched out on it while huge soldiers held him down and hammered the nails. And then Jesus standing in the middle of a circle of soldiers who were laughing at him and taking his clothes. The rest of the statues were no better. Jesus falling down under the weight of the cross. Jesus face to face with friends who clearly could not understand what was happening. The fear on their faces, they must have felt so lost, so confused. Eventually he found Walt back near the beginning of the story at the statue showing the scene where Jesus has just got his death sentence. Tony was struck by how calm Jesus looked. Not like he'd given up, not like he'd lost, but like he really knew that it was going to be okay. 
Like he was where he was supposed to be and he was just waiting for everybody else to catch up. Walt was sitting on the bench, both hands holding his cane across his knees, completely focused on that bronze face. The place was so quiet. A bit of traffic, a few birds, footsteps, but quiet, like Remembrance Day. Walt sat with his head tilted just slightly and a smile in his eyes, looking more like himself than Tony had seen him in months. It was Shane who had adopted Walt and Esther when he was 12. He'd gone out looking to make some cash after a snowstorm and an hour after he headed out, the phone had rung and Shane on the other end said these really nice, really old people had paid him 20 bucks to shovel their walk and invited him in for hot chocolate and he was standing on their front porch because he knew better than to go into a stranger's house, but they were really nice and really old. And was it okay? So Tony asked for the address and Shane who said it was number 136 on their own street and Tony said, all right, but half an hour, no longer. Got it? Got it. Ever since then, Shane had been helping out with their garden or the snow and staying for lemonade or for hot chocolate. He never talked about it much, but uh, Tony did not miss the fact that when Shane came home from these visits, he was calmer. Tony had mixed feelings about the whole thing, but now with how tense things were at home, mostly he was grateful to these really nice, really old people for giving his son a bit of peace. And now, two winters later, Esther was gone. And Meg was gone, although not entirely gone enough sometimes. And here was Tony chewing his nails, dying for a smoke. And there was Walt, lost in a moment that Tony didn't understand. Walt and Esther had loved each other more than Tony had thought humanly possible till the day the ambulance was in their driveway. And Walt's love of 57 years was just gone. Tony headed for the gate. He decided he'd wait for Walt there. There was some space now on the bench near the first statue. And it was cold against his legs, so he pulled his coat down as he took a seat. The statue seemed bigger now. A man in a long robe, barefoot, on his knees, collapsed over a boulder with his face buried in the crook of one arm and the other curled over the back of his head. His fingers were clenched in his hair, his shoulders hunched up, his toes digging into the dirt. He looked terrified of what, of what he had to do, of not having done enough, of being alone. Of course, he wasn't alone. Somebody had written down what he said, somebody who cared enough to stick around, but didn't know what to say or how to help, what to do. Somebody who probably would have tried to stop him if they'd known. Somebody who just knew that he was in pain but couldn't walk away. And Tony wondered about that silent watcher, watching his friend suffer. Just like Tony had watched his son suffer as his parents' marriage fell apart. Just as he'd watched Walt suffer in the ambulance, holding Esther's hand, saying goodbye, just being there helpless. But how, 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 how had this man, this Jesus, become the one that Walt was looking at? How had these white knuckles become those calm, relaxed hands? There was something about angels, Tony remembered, but 
he figured if an angel suddenly started talking to him, he'd feel the need to check himself in somewhere. So there had to be more to it than that. Jesus knew what was coming, and he was determined to stand up and take it. He could have walked away. He could have at least tried, but he didn't because it was too important. Important enough to make himself die for. To die for. Looking at that statue, Tony thought that either Jesus went through all that for nothing. And it just proved that the world was poisoned. Or maybe, maybe, all those annoying TV preachers were right. And Jesus died for a reason. He wasn't sure which seemed worse. Or maybe they were both true. Maybe the world was poisoned. And maybe Jesus did die to make it right. He sat for a long time thinking till he realized he was cold. Walt would be coming soon. He thought about Walt. And peace. And that maybe he had a few questions to ask over lunch. <laughs>